Good evening. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I am so pleased you're back. Um, I just think this small group Bible study during Lent is is a is a wonderful gift. And I hope I, I'm enjoying it. I know I think you are too. So I want to introduce you, my friend Julie Tanner, um, hey, who is um a cellist, um, retired assistant principal cellist with the Nashville Symphony. And we have a very generous friend who when she wants she meets friends, she wants friends to know each other. AJ Levine is a good friend of ours and one day she said to me I have a friend you need to meet and so she um we ate dinner together and that was a couple of years ago yeah we've been getting together ever since and so when I told her about my book she said you know <laughs> I've got some music and mm -hmm. and um and I, I said well yeah let's make this work um um so here we are tonight um, with Julie among us and, and some, so it's going to go a little bit differently. We've got, um, just going to play something to begin with, and then we're going to be hearing the psalm and doing the same things we've been doing, looking at the psalm, looking at some um, textual variations with um, different translations of paraphrase, some questions for discussion. You got, you know, you, you're, you're great at doing this. You know what you're doing. Uh, we'll have a musical interlude in the middle somewhere. And then uh, as we leave, um, we will be able to just focus as Julie plays a piece for us to leave with. So our poetry tonight will be um, like, like, the, like the Psalms, uh, a poetry of, of music. So I am so excited to teach with you and then what I learned when talking to Julie um and I got a private concert last Thursday <laughs> at our house and I this beautiful instrument um and um what I'm learning is that Julie is is, is equally a good teacher um as she is a, as a musician and, uh, and I'm really grateful for that I'm going to start with a piece for you just to center with and be calm this is a Sarabande by Bach uh, from his fifth suite in C minor. And of course, Bach was the one who said that all the music that he wrote was to the glory of God. And I'm gonna go directly into what wondrous love is this mm -hmm. from the Bach Sarabande. Uh, Thank you. 
Lib has suggested that I go ahead and help out by reading the psalm, Psalm 63. And it turned out when we were talking that I have a translation that I kind of love for psalms. Um, it's the James Moffat translation of the Bible. And so I'm going to read from the Moffat translation, and it's going to be a little bit different than what you have in your handouts. Let me say a word about how about, why, about why, why you love Moffat translation. Um, for me, especially um, in the Psalms, I feel he captures the poetry in a way that um, some translations might try to be really literal and correct. And even though this translation was one of the first in the beginning of the 20th century to be considered a modern a quote unquote modern <laughs> translation of the Bible. I, I think it captures the poetry in a beautiful, beautiful way. Oh God, thou art my God. I yearn for thee. Body and soul, I thirst. I long for thee like a land without water, weary, dry. As I have seen thee in the sanctuary with visions of thy power and majesty, so will I bless thee while I live lifting my hands in prayer to thee. Thy love is more than life to me, so my lips praise thee. My soul is richly fed, and with glad lips I sing thy praise. When I remember thee in bed and muse on thee by night, my soul clings close to thee. Thy right hand holds me fast. For thou hast been my help, and shadowed by thy wings, I sing thy praise. Those who would take my life shall be destroyed. They shall go down to death, flung to the sword, left as prey for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God, and all the loyal shall exult, for false rebels shall be silenced. <laughs> So there are a couple of things to notice about this psalm, and you can um, if you have it available um, either on your phone or whatever, or your Bible on the table. Um, it's got a heading, and um, the heading says something like "Of David um, uh, in the Wilderness of Judah." Um, well, we don't really know which wilderness time is referenced here. Scholars think that it could have been when David was a young man running away from Saul. But um, notice how this wilderness you know, connects with your own, uh, with David's sense of physical and spiritual drought. And then he remembers the temple where he knew God's presence in a time when he really wasn't hungry or thirsty, but rather a time when he felt full of God's steadfast love, God's chesed, God's um, faithful love, as other translations have described it. So we've got a real simple little form here. Um, and um, it's in, it's interesting. This this uh, psalm is used, I think, this third week of Lent, right? And um, But we, we don't get the end verses. We don't get the last verses, um, which is kind of <laughs> right <laughs> it's like my friend Sarah Tanzer says, why, why, why do you Christians cut out the hard parts of these songs? You know, she's a good faithful Jew, and she says, why do you leave out the hard stuff? Uh, it is interesting when you when you read not through 11, it's, it's one of those places where I begin to wonder, was that last verse edited? Was that an editor ad? Um, uh, um, you never know about these things. Um, so in verses one and two, uh, he has vivid words that describe the depth of his longing for God. And um, I, one one um, author that I found writing about this psalm says that um, 
that in this psalm we get the idea that that longing is healthy mm -hmm. that his thirst for god's presence invites and brings god's presence then god's presence satisfies longings so with this insight you think about the fact that longing is good it's not representative of a lack or an indica indication of weakness, but rather a longing represents a strength of insight and health. And that's a really interesting way to frame it. Sometimes when somebody says, I'm really uh, weak in my faith, it makes you wonder, are, are they really weak? Or are they longing? Do they have a longing you know, for more nourishment? And that's, that's a good thing, I think, of that kind of longing. And then we get to verses three and five, and uh, we see the psalmist's words of praise and blessing. And this was where um, this is where my eyes were drawn when I was looking for the word that was going to pop out in that style of Lectio Divina. When when you're re reading a scripture three times, and the first time you read it or hear it, what's a word that jumps out for you? And so, as I was picking psalms for this book, um, I was looking for a word that I thought we might think about it. And of course, it's the word bless. Um, and verse three is the clearest statement of David's belief. David's belief when he writes that God's steadfast love of God is better than life. Um, so uh, Clinton McCann, who's writing about the psalm, says that in a real sense, steadfast love is something like a one word summary of the character of God. I mean, you think about all those th ways that God is described and a one word summary, summary of the character of God is in a real sense, steadfast love. Um, and that, that we, we, we've encountered that steadfast love before and it's, it's all over the Old Testament. And it's such a beautiful way to describe the, the constancy of God's love, God's abiding presence. Then six to eight, he talks about his confidence in God's abiding presence and notice the repetition of the word um, um, soul. Um, my soul is satisfied with a rich feast. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Um, clinging to God. Um, and don't we all? And then, so that's where it ends in, in the reading. And if we heard it in, in worship, that's where it, you, you wouldn't get the hard stuff here. Um, uh, the writer moves, it's a very different tone, isn't it? You know, um, but those who seek to destroy my life shall go down to the depths of the earth. And they shall be given over to the power of the sword. They, sh they shall be prey for jackals. Boy, it really gets, you know, tough there. But the king, this is the one where I wonder, but the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exult for the mountains, mouths of liars will be stopped. I I don't know. What do you think? I just think that last verse just doesn't fit. We're, we haven't been talking about the king at all. All of a sudden it gets thrown in at the end. Do you think it could be an editor popping it in? I don't know. I think somebody found three verses that were lost. And they were lost, and, were lost and, 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 and they were added. Uh, and then were sort of numbered to go. Yeah, so and so it just kind of fit. It kind of has so a, a um, numbering scheme more than that it fit. I mean, it could have ended with, you know, maybe that's why, you know, the Presbyterian in our lectionary, we end with um, verse verse um, eight and and don't read the last three um, um another commentator says the complete psalm offers the more realistic ebb and flow of the appropriation of god's grace so that even when 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 um those who are seeking to destroy us that's more re realistic about how life really works it's not always um we're, we're always dealing with these difficult issues um those are um, so longing. I think when I it jumps out at me is this longing for God and this um, uh, and that longing is good. It's representative not of a lack but of a strength and and God's steadfast love. Um, any any questions um, you have about these verses? Well, you know, maybe I read this wrong, and I, I read your chapter and actually did a little looking around for some, some descriptions of or definitions of the word blessed. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me to grasp David blessing God, I bless you, I but it seems like David should be thanking God mm -hmm. and God should be blessing David. So I, I and then I, 
I, I read these prayers every day that are in the bulletin. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, you know, whatever week this was, were you preaching this week? He was, well, you won't know until I show he you. Was a, he really wasn't was preaching <laughs> Sunday. Uh, you know which one it is, but it's over here somewhere. Were you preaching that day? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good answer. Well, you know, I happened upon the last week's bulletin, not this past week's, but the one before. And, you know, the prayer of confession uh, God, our Redeemer, you call us to be a blessing to the world. Mm -hmm. And so I started. I started then thinking about hymns mm -hmm. that have the word blessing or blessed in, and there's a whole lot of them. And, uh, you know, I, I've really struggled with us being human, being worthy of blessing God and instead thanking God. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. My father would say, when somebody would say, time to bless the food, he'd say, we don't bless food, we bless God. Oh, interesting. Hmm. 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 Is so does bless mean thankful? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's to your point about you know, saying thank you to God. I was really struck too by that by that whole thing of, of David saying, mm -hmm. um, I will bless you. And and maybe it is. Um Blessing as a way of like your father of saying thank you. Your father probably wasn't raised in the Baptist Probably wasn't raised in the Baptist But you know, you think of uh, East of Eden, how much a blessing is worth in that novel. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's yeah. really you know, a classic. Okay, hold on to that because we're going to come, um, we're going to let. Um, Julie's going to um, talk for a few minutes about musical interpretation in the Psalms and play a little interlude, and then we're going to be turning to these um, paraphrase and trans translations. What is that? I'm, I'm sure you all know that the beautiful poetry and the prayerful qualities of the Psalms have, have long been linked with music. And, you know, we can really only imagine now how the ancient people um, sung these sacred texts um, that were being written and recorded on scrolls. Mm -hmm. um, they might have sung them too, solo, maybe in groups, and certainly with uh, played and sung with the instruments in existence at the time. Uh, people have known for many centuries that by devising a simple melody to sing a text, um, that not only will it be easier to remember, it kind of adds a new dimension to it. And I'm going to demonstrate with that with a um, hymn that's based on Psalm 63. Um, you know, archaeologists posit that maybe the earliest example of written music might have been from Turkey in the second century BC. They're guessing. But we do know that in the 11th century, I love this name. There was a Benedictine monk named Guido of Arezzo. Uh, <laughs> um, and he devised the notation for chants that um, have evolved into what we think of now as music notation in the Western world. And um, sacred texts, including the Psalms, were used then and surely before then. And as classical music evolved from the sacred and secular music of Europe and the Middle East, the beauty of these psalm texts has really existed through every era of music. Hymns of old and new, really every Christian denomination. Um, I, I doubt you can find any Christian hymn book that does not have at least several hymns that are based on the psalms. Um, from Bach and Marcello and Vivaldi, all the way up to Liszt, Mendelssohn, Stravinsky, contemporary settings by Leonard Bernstein, Penderecki and Peart, solo, choral, orchestral, accompanied settings, they just abound in the classical music literature. Um, and also the texts from Psalms are used in praise and worship songs with a rock band <laughs> that are popular in churches today. Um, so my hope today is that the music will help to give you some pause 
to consider uh, the psalm that we're attending to today. Um, and I'm going to play my solo cello, cello setting of a well-known hymn from your hymnal based on that psalm that will give you an added dimension for your consideration. You might have sung it. It's uh, called, Oh God, You Are My God Alone, which is not the translation that I read you, but <laughs> I, I need to look up which translation that is. But the melody helps you to remember those words because it starts, Oh God, you are my God Oops, I think I'm saying that wrong. It's hard to sing and play cello. With yes. <laughs> not, not something I do very often, <laughs> but, but, that's our <laughs> but, oh God, you are my God alone, whom eagerly I seek. Mm -hmm. That's what I was trying to mm -hmm. sing to you. Yeah. Um. Um. Do you have that in your handbook? Um, you know, we do not have that one in the disciples' handbook, but. Um, hang on, uh, do you know the date of that? Um, is, that you know, is that familiar to anybody, the tune? It is? No, it's not. Not, yeah. not for you, Carol, but yes. Interesting, I think I put the in here. Some kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's a lovely tune, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The words, yeah, you could hear them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you yeah. can really yeah. hear it. Okay, um. sing well. <laughs> 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 Lovely, isn't it? Um, I discovered um, when I was meeting with a guy before we started teaching um, that there's this uh, resource for. Um, the church, uh, which I guess Westminster uses a lot because we do a lot of uh, responses and ca canters here. And there's an accompanying book um, 
with uh, with just psalms and hymns and and, and tune uh, psalms and do you know what I'm talking about that that big thick book it's in your office and it's where you get all the the responses when like a cantor sings and then we sing that kind of stuff that we do a lot here it's a big thick book Terry has it I believe it. No. Well, I don't know if it's one of our, if we did it, you know, if Westminster did it or not. But it's really nice. And I bought, I got a copy so I could show it to Julie because I was just intrigued that there's this extra resource in addition to the hymn book, which has ways to, to sing, um, sing the Psalms um, um, more than just, just, you know, yeah in different ways like the call and response or the cantor and the responsive you know so um any any comments of, or thoughts about the, the music Lane, you, yeah. Yeah. So, it's like you said julie when, when you read the words i could remember i could hear them over and over again yeah music. when i brought back that uh -huh. first line oh god you are my god alone then that would echo with you when yeah. you heard those notes yeah that's yeah, amazing how few poems we know but how many songs we know like lyrics of song and even songs that we don't think we know all of a sudden you could name the tune and suddenly the words come back yeah right. yeah well I, you know it's a long time ago they just did a poll about what people remember at worship and it's the it's the hymns mm -hmm. the music they remember they don't remember the golden words for our sermons right <laughs> <laughs> and people with so i don't like to think of that way yeah. <laughs> Occasionally they do. Yeah. People with dementia will remember the words. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Would you repeat the second line of what you read before? I'm sorry. I can hear your question. The second. The second line second of the hymn. Of, of the hymn. The second line of the hymn. Okay. That's. I'm going to have to go and get it out of my other. Oh God, you are my oh. God alone. Um, See what Thomas next. I think you had read. No, she didn't read it. I, did, I read I a different that, translation. Oh, 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 you meant you meant the translation I, I of the song? What she just read. Mark. The one something. Uh -huh. um, That's you oh, eagerly. What she just see. read. Oh, eagerly. Something. Was this the psalter? Oh, I eagerly seek. Was this the psalter? Mm -hmm. she... It's um. Big one. I think yeah. 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 Ye
my hands and joy all raised. Oh, that's really fun. <laughs> you got the right to raise hands. Oh, yeah. the art visual artist. Um, you know, I got I love that. I hadn't even I hadn't even seen that. Notice that uh, with the connection. My deepest needs you satisfy as with a sumptuous feast. So on my lips and in my heart, your praise has never ceased. Throughout the night I lie in bed and call you, Lord, to mind. In darkest hours, I meditate how God, my strength, is kind. Mm -hmm. Beneath the shadow of your wing, I live and feel secure. And daily as I follow close, your right hand keeps me sure. It's beautiful. Yeah. So it does stop with verse eight. Mm -hmm. We don't get king. <laughs> no jackals. No jackals. Yeah. <laughs> no jackals. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's look at these uh, four um we've got um one paraphrase and three translations so would somebody read uh, let's let's take turn somebody read alter alter um jackie you got that so in the sanctum i beheld you seeing your strength and your glory for your kindness is better than life my lips praise you thus i bless you while i live Okay. Hey, Lane, can you read Common English? Mm -hmm. Yes. I've seen you in the sanctuary. I've seen your power and glory. My lips praise you because your faithful love is better than life itself. So I will bless you as long as I'm alive. Can I somebody at the back table read uh, Pamela Greenberg? In holy places, I have gazed for you, hoping to witness your power and glory, for your kindness is better than life. My lips will praise you. I will bless you with my entire life. Okay, Don, when you get Eugene Peterson. So here I am in the place of worship, eyes open, drinking in your strength and glory. In your generous love, I am really living at last. My lips brim praises like fountains. I bless you every time I take a breath. What do you notice? I, anyone you drawn to more than another? You still have your um, um, Moffat um, mm -hmm. for um, verses two to four. Mm -hmm. Just remember what, what, what you read with Moffat, right? Okay. To the four. <clears throat> As I have seen thee in the sanctuary with visions of thy power and majesty, so will I bless thee while I live, lifting my hands in prayer to thee. Hmm. Thy love is more than life to me, so my lips praise thee. So lift my hands in prayer to thee. Mm -hmm. That's really different, isn't it? Yeah. That's not, um, that's very different from uh, the rest. Mm -hmm. I, I, does anybody have um, NRSV open? What does it say? Right. Yeah. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, holding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. Anything you notice or stand out for you? Anything you're drawn to in these translations or paraphrase? Um, Go ahead. I love Eugene Peterson drinking in your strength and glory. I like that one also because it has that pentameter rhythm built into the words. Mm. With each phrase. Mm -hmm. I like what Pamela Greenberg said at the end. I will bless you with my entire life. I love that. I do too. I was wondering I... Uh, the Hebrew is thus I will bless you while I live. Uh -huh. I was wondering mm -hmm. if it's uh, you know as long as you keep me alive God I'll, keep, I'll, I'll bless you. Mm -hmm. I mean just 
Just so you know. Just so you know. <laughs> Just so you know, God, as long as I'm living. If then. Yeah. You get blessed. Contractual. But, but if I die. If I die. That's, then that's the end. Right. That's a little jaded, isn't it? No, I, mean, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Well, the common English, that's what the common English Bible says. So I will bless you as long as I'm alive. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Carol is kind of bargaining. A mm -hmm. Well, human, the, human the, human, <laughs> the human condition, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the element of these, um, especially Carol, to your inquiry about can we bless God? is that all of this is surrounded in worship. And um, I was doing a little bit of digging because sometimes I just can't help myself <laughs> in terms of uh, the Hebrew word is barak, um, which in this context, uh, to bless is definitely a, a translation. Another translation of that particular word is kneel. 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 Kneel, yeah. A-N-E-E-L, kneeling, yeah. like kneeling, mm -hmm. which adds to that sense of, mm -hmm. when you put it, even though you don't, bless is definitely the, the right word here in any way in terms of, inter of a translation, but if you replace it, my lips praise you, thus I kneel, mm -hmm. I will kneel as long as I'm alive, like it, it, it mm -hmm. to me, it, it, it captures the idea of our ability to bless God and our worship. That really makes sense. I mean, mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. I think of humility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. And in some churches, you you do kneel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yours is cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get up and down. As long as the kneelers are padded, right? With a nice, nice, nice needle point, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really drawn to. Um, um, the entire life idea that Pamela Greenberg writes about. Well, um, we have a, another um, moment of meditation um, from Julie. This is just a short bit of a setting I did of a, a hymn that I've felt related well to the psalm. Um, it's Spirit of God descend upon my heart.
So you chose that um, to go with the song. Would you mind saying a word or two about? I mean, I grew. I don't. I, that's just in my memory bank. That you know, <laughs> always. And it was played a lot when I was a child at communion. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I have played. Have it you for, played it at communion? For uh -huh. communion, actually, I wrote it kind of specifically to play at communion. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking the part of the psalm where, um, you know, I'm in my bed at night mm -hmm. and I think of you, Spirit mm -hmm. of God, descend upon on my heart. Yeah. yeah, kind of a nice way to close the day, then mm -hmm. to find some that peace. You know. Mm -hmm. It's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> no, I never want. I never want to teach again without you. But <laughs> this is just too much fun. Um, on the back of your, um, the other side of the handout are some some questions. Um, I thought we might for a little bit um, look at number one. Um, um, what are some ways that? Um, you have blessed God, or what are some ways that God has blessed you? Um, or number two, um, a time like uh, this psalm is, is ascribed to David, a wilderness time. Um, but I, I, I can always think of answers after the fact more than mm -hmm. in the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last week you talked about the people that maybe God didn't see. Mm -hmm. And then this sort of reminds me of the same thing in a wilderness. And it made me remember that when I had um cancer and I had to be in isolation because my numbers were so bad. And I remember being strolled down the hallway in a bald <laughs> IV thing along with me uh, on the way to get this x-ray and looking at people in the hall and nobody would look at me. They looked at me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just remember that so vividly. Mm -hmm. um, it was like I was just invisible that I was not there. And I was looking at them yeah but, talk about a dry place yeah mm -hmm. yeah which mm -hmm. you already in a dry place but yeah. that made it even yeah. harder mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was working this morning with a woman who is in a very desperate place having escaped a country that was hurting her and hurting many of her family homes. And she was struggling with all of the ways in which our country um, makes it more difficult for her to be here. But as we talked, we understood there were ways in which she could get help for herself, for her newborn child, for her father who has had open heart surgery, and her, for her mother who is trying to work to help support them. And after we had worked so hard and found this very challenging and difficult, we experienced a kind of blessing as we looked at each other. Um, she burst out into tears. And I knew that there were ways in which I had hurt her in some of the things I said. Mm -hmm. And then we came together mm -hmm. and there was a blessing mm -hmm. that I think each of us felt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll remember that for a while. Mm -hmm. Any other ways you've experienced um, blessing God or ways God has blessed you? 
and you listen to a cello and you think, <laughs> uh, I'm that ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I feel blessed to be a musician and to have had a family that supported me and uh, made it possible for me to learn uh, and then actually have a career in music. But I, I feel blessed now, retired, to have a church where I often play and um, playing in worship is a very different experience to me in a, in a beautiful way as opposed to what I used to call um, Boeing for dollars but <laughs> anyway um, it's right <laughs> but I mean there were I, I had many wonderful inspiring moments as a musician I don't mean to but but anyway and I feel then that especially playing in worship that that's a way for me to turn that blessing back over mm -hmm. and and to bless to bless God mm -hmm. with my music and hope hopefully bring people closer sure. Sure. to God. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think of you know that there's the, the passage of you know how can you uh love God and hate your neighbor and you have mm -hmm. to love your neighbor in order to love God. And you know my life is you know with so many people that you know in the church you know, even people in the room, to me, it's like you get a snapshot of something of who God is like and just all the different personalities and how over a lifetime, your life has just been blessed by these little aspects of God that have just been delightful, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, having Jackie in my, you know, in my life, mm -hmm. you know, I see something that I never would have seen mm -hmm. before, right? You know, mm -hmm. and and that's and you need all of them, right? Right, and and all of that adds up to some small percentage of who God is, and you get a little bit bigger percentage by meeting one more new person or getting to know one more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The experience I often have is I'm dealing with people of different faiths, mm -hmm. and so I'm very careful how I refer to any faith I have. But we often find words mm -hmm. that acknowledge each of our faiths that are in our own way. Because I deal with Muslims and Buddhists and and all kinds of faiths from around the world. And yet there is a connection of God as an experience mm -hmm. without necessarily that word. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's where I have felt the closest is traveling and in and, and places people I didn't know and re religions, traditions different from mine. Yeah. And, and yet, to me, it's saying thank you for these experiences, you know, up, up into something vast that I do not know. You know, <laughs> you know so thank you for this day, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I have to say thank you to something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, his face, you know, have I seen today that added to to my experience of who God is. Um, I'm like you that all these people contribute something. Anybody anybody else? Any thoughts? Or the last question: God can be experienced in our daily activities. I think Jackie's story is a great as a great response to that question. Um, um, as you described that presence and a blessing that happened, um, I I wrote about in the very beginning of the chapter. My way into the chapter was um, I think I was at the grocery store and I was so I just moved to Chicago. It was nineteen eighty four. I'd never lived out of the South. I'd moved from Florence, Alabama, which is, you know, not the booming capital of, uh, of Alabama. We had one building with an elevator, and I moved to the south side of Chicago, and my grandmother and mother were in the car, my car, and my grandmother was saying, you know, as we drove down Stony Island, uh, south Chicago, my grandma was saying, well, she can't live here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she can't live here. I mean, the south side of Chicago has not been as taken care of as well as the north side of Chicago, let's be honest about it. I mean, it's just, you know, and it, 
and it's gonna it's gonna happen eventually. But um, I was I think in the grocery stores where I, I met people um who um who all had relatives like me in the South, and we would stand there um looking at lettuce together, and and I was so lonely <laughs> and to miss and miss um uh, my family and friends and living in this strange city and. And um, how are you? Well, I'm blessed. I was like, it was the first time I'd ever heard anybody say, I'm blessed. And that's, you know, that's um, for me, it was a black church. You know, I'm blessed. Uh, how are you? I'm blessed. And um, um, and it, it, and now I wish I had followed up and said, well, how are you blessed? Tell me, because <laughs> I want to know too. Um, um, how, um, and then, you know, that get great Southern um, expression, you know, when you don't know what else to say about somebody, you know, <laughs> bless, your, <laughs> bless your heart, well, bless her heart, bless his heart. You know, it just kind of fills in gaps, you know, when, uh, um, and surely that person is going to be a blessing to somebody. Um, you know, I, I might not see it today, but maybe I'll see it. Maybe I'll see it tomorrow. Um, you know, this part that says even strangers bless our lives. There, uh, I'll never forget that experience in Jerusalem when we got on the bus and we were going to the, oh, we're going, where are the olive trees that are so old? Is that the Garden of Gethsemane? The Mount of Olives? No, um, yeah, it near was the, the near the Mount of Olives. So mm -hmm. There's a church there that has really very old. The old, old, the old, old, old. And it, so we were all tired and it was late in the day and getting off the bus and I happened to look at a woman who was sitting waiting for a bus and she looked right at me and said, welcome home. Oh my God! I thought that's strange, and then at first I thought, well, "Does she think we're Jewish?" Uh -huh. Then we got to the olive trees, yeah. and you know how we would do a devotion. It was Clisby's turn, and she opened up the book by Bruce Felter, and it was talking about how Jerusalem is the home oh, of three Muslims, Christians, Christians Jews, Jews. Jews. Yeah. And uh, it, it had such a, a, a wonderful meaning. I'll never forget mm -hmm. that. I thought, you know, when she said, welcome home to us, mm -hmm. I felt blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I invite you this week, um, as you um, move around uh, in your life and all that, that encounters, um, to think about um, the ways that, that God has blessed you or the ways that you bless God or... Um, and I love, I love your story about your dad. We don't, we don't, we, bless the food. we don't bless the food. We bless God. Um, and and think about how you the ways that you um, bless God this week. Um, I my other love is talking about um, the spiritual formation of of children and families and um, teenagers. I, and that was kind of my research interest before I retired. And I guess my my thank you to God is that I always had a photographer friend. I always envied, envied her because I thought she never has to retire because she can mm -hmm. she can take aerial shots of, you know, of Chicago or the Kansas flying in a plane like she does and she never has to retire because he's an artist and I'm thinking I have to retire and mm -hmm. and then I discovered that um you know um, I, I can keep writing. <laughs> I keep failing at it, and, and thank you to my press that I can write children's books and adult books, and I can keep, you know, because I think it's words that mean so much to me, and the crafting of words, and and um, so, and, and and like music has blessed you, I think um, unknown to me, words have really blessed me, so think about um, the presence of God in your life, and the ways that families, friends, and even strangers um, bless your lives. Um we're going to close with a piece of music by Tartini, and if you want to say anything about that, um, we'll let that be our closing for tonight. Um, next week, we turn to a, a most familiar psalm, the 23rd psalm, as we move into the fourth week of Lent, and we'll be, um, and Julie will be back with us again for some more musical interpretation. Mm -hmm. I just picked out this piece by uh, Giuseppe Tartini because I thought it was beautiful. It's a, a movement from one of his sonata. He's um, a broke Italian composer. So I just hope it kind of gives you a, a peaceful feeling as we get ready to go. And maybe you can sort of, if you want to close your eyes and think about the psalm and, and what we've said. <laughs> Thank you. 
Go in peace. <laughs> um, may this week bring you blessings that you don't even know about, and may you be a blessing to all those you need. See you next week. Mm -hmm.